semi-final kickoff, and it's a penalty against Canberra immediately for being in front of the kicker. What a magnificent start for Cronulla. The most basic of errors. I don't think we've seen a penalty for it all year, even though in nearly every game there is a player an inch in front of the man as he kicks off to restart play. Let's look at the replay. Ricky Stewart changes direction here as he moves into the ball and look, two, three, four, five players in front of him. And look at that in the in goal area. Let's hope no one gets tripped up in that northern in goal area. Looks like an explosion in a toilet. Porter from dummy half. Docking. Coming down the centre, this is Lee. Hatch. The pressure now applied from Pickin. The same pattern, just taking it down the centre through Porter. And also the big fellas, Pickin and Lee. And what a magnificent catch there from Gary Coyne. What incredible reflexes that was. Coyne had his eye, eye right on the ball and it came straight to him. He managed to grab hold of it. Let's go down to the sideline, and good afternoon to John Beard. Thank you, David. Well, uh, the Sharks running with a southerly wind, and they'll be looking for their kickers, particularly early in the game, to put them at the right end of the field. But I think the battle will be won up front and the forwards, and that's uh, just where it'll be decided. Uh, can Cronulla play to their capacity? That's the key. The kick from Stewart, his first of the afternoon. He's got that right hamstring very heavily strapped. He limped from the field on Thursday night at training. It's still stag now someone's finally getting involved and uh, thank god one of the abc fellows down there trying to remove that incredible amount of toilet paper and streamers at that northern end would have been horrific if someone had got tangled up in that and it cost the team a try the raiders will have to work very hard to cover up for the loss of their hooker steve walters wayne collins out there only has a handful of games under his belt but uh, he has a very important job. You lose a lot of organisation without your pivot in there at dummy half. The scrum to go down 20 metres out from Canberra's line. And it came off a Canberra player, you'll notice. Fly Fleet getting in the road and say, Cronulla, get the scrum feed. All the opportunities going Cronulla's way early. Bishop Speechley, that long ball, that's been left on the ground. That wasn't good football from Cronulla. McGaw had the chance. Mark McGaw seemed to have plenty of time to take this, but just looked up. Crucial moment too early and left it behind. He might have been wondering when Mal Meninga was going to arrive. Of course, that was the sort of move that saw that brilliant try scored by Alan Wilson that started the Cronulla roll on Tuesday night. Now, here's Clyde. Good defence. Two second row as Miller and Staines there. Coin. It was Wayne Collins hails from Marimula. A very special good afternoon to everyone down on the South Coast watching this game this afternoon live on ABC television. Confidently picked up by Docking. And good defence from Meninga. Davidson, the dummy half. Porter. Let's see what they do here, whether it's Porter and then Lee and then Pickin who take it up for the first three rucks. Bishop, Miller getting involved. Here's Lee. Pretty straightforward the other night, but very effective. Settling things down a lot. Now Miller. Canberra Ford's moving up quickly. Speechley for the kick. Behind Ferguson. The fringes of this field really are in outstanding condition. Centre of the field as one would expect after all the early season rain. It was very patchy. But the surrounds, two quarter line areas and down the touch lines, very good. Good tackle again. That was Clyde who had to play it. Penalty goes against Cronulla up inside the five. It takes a bit of pressure off camera. We really have had the pressure on them since the starter said go five minutes ago. Gore and Danny Lee caught up inside the five metres here, but they seem to be fairly deep, and it's no wonder some of the crowd booed. They were back with the referee. And he was back ten metres. 
this year, the first round at Caldex Field, Cronulla were brilliant when they demolished Canberra 32-14, the return match. Cronulla got home 22-16, but you remember that that was in the middle of the New Zealand tour and all the Canberra internationals, of course, were away in New Zealand. Great hit there from Danny Staines, who, of course, was in New Zealand as well. Collins, the dummy half, Stewart, O'Sullivan. Quick hands, but that was good defence, but look at Meninga. He really is a big, strong man. O'Sullivan. Collins. Coin. Coin. Couldn't slip the defence. Last tackle against Canberra. Meninga's the dummy half. Stewart's going to put the kick in. Looking for the gap between Docking and Davidson. That's a super kick. He really did force play all the way back to the goal line. And what great football from Docking. Davidson down the left flank. Jonathan Docking had a field day the other night, Tuesday night. He was allowed to run. That time Canberra kicked away from him. But they didn't really have a wall of defenders in front of him. And he is so elusive. Ducking and weaving, changing direction. And he eluded two tacklers to put his winger clear. And no one moving up in the straight line. Made it much easier for him. Good tackle on Pickett. It was Lance, who was the, the defender. Speechley's kick. Bounces and then crosses the touchline. Matthew Wood, the winger in position there, had dropped back, but he found Speechley's kick just travelling over his head. He didn't want to uh, jump in the air and try and get a hand onto it, and it lobbed perfectly into touch. That virtually landed on the proverbial sixpence, didn't it? Belcher. When you look at these two teams today, there's magnificent matchups right across the park. From fullback to hooker. That forward, that pass to coin. And awaiting his chance to get onto the Sydney Football Stadium, the 1988 Rothmans medalist, Barry Russell. Once more, the kick down to Docking, but only O'Sullivan up close to him, but O'Sullivan manages to make a good tackle. A lot of these Pranana players taking their time to get back on side. We've already seen Brisbane in reserve grade who had to come through the playoff on both Tuesday and Thursday night. Really show some leg weariness in the second half. They jumped to an early 10-0 lead, Brisbane, but went down in the end, 22-14. Well, playing steadily so far, but this is their third match in six days, their second in four days. It's a tough task they've got ahead of them. Yes, well, from the sideline, both sides sorting each other out, trying to get their kicks away. There's a bad one from Gavin Miller, but uh, it's just a, a sorting out period at this stage, and... Uh, Cronulla looking to have the advantage at the moment territorially. Miller under some pressure there from Lazarus, trying to kick from the dummy half position. Well, both these teams are very good in the attacking area. Canberra, of course, the highest point scorers in the competition for both the last two seasons. 596 last year, 457 this year. And Cronulla, no slouches in that area either. Daly getting in behind the defence, but he can't set up Ferguson. Cronulla scored 507 last year and 368 this year. O'Sullivan, Clyde, wrapping around. O'Sullivan again, back on the inside. Here's Belcher, Belcher in space. Belcher trying to link up. Belcher still making ground. Belcher should have had the backup he was looking for. He's in the middle of the field, searching. Collins, Stewart, Stewart throws the dummy. She only lost the ball and Cronulla have got it. Miller, here's Lee, but my word, Canberra should have put that one away. Yes, when Gary Belcher managed to stay alive right in front of the post, he had plenty of time to look for support, and uh, someone should have been there, Ricky Stewart, Chris O'Sullivan. Now, O'Sullivan had figured early in the movement, and he looks very sharp out there today, their Raiders 5-8. I'm not saying anything against Wayne Collins, but Steve Walters is always backing up down the centre of the park. Great uh, thinking there from Porter as he pinches good 15 metres. Penalty. 
And that's silly football from Lazarus. It was the last tackle. Cronulla were going to be forced to either hand it over or at least give Canberra a chance of position. But I just wonder whether Porter just didn't drop that. Oh, I don't think so. I think uh, Lazarus had a hand in there and pulled it out. So Cronulla to restart play. Ashley Gilbert. The handling certainly not as assured as it was against Brisbane. Yet. A couple of early handling errors. I'm lucky to get away with that one too. But there is a difference in this Canberra defence. The forwards are very solid. I wouldn't say they'd be causing fear in the Sharks, but they are moving up quickly and putting some pressure on. And that makes it that much harder to control your handling. You don't have the time to do what you'd like when you're running the ball up and looking to collect runners. Just inside Canberra's territory. Last tackle against the Sharks. Speechley deciding to kick from dummy half. Belcher. He's got Wood back there in support. Wisely decided to hold onto the ball. Speechley was standing right on top of Wood so that the odds were that he wouldn't have improved the position in any way. Clyde almost up to the quarter line. Stewart. Just outside the quarter line. Stewart, O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan again almost standing up the opposition. Last tackle against Canberra. Stewart again looking for the gap between the winger and the fullback. And that's finished up being a good kick. Sends Wilson a long way back. Ferguson chasing Wilson. And Ferguson equal to the task. Puts him on the deck. Docking. Daly the defender. Once Wilson hit the deck, he was very quickly on his feet, and that gave Docking the chance to run from dummy half. And again, Ferguson there will be holding his right thigh muscle for a second. In fact, John Ferguson, the back play, is leaning over a fraction. He doesn't look... You know, he just pulled his sock up again. Take a lot to hurt old man River, I think. Now, quick hands here's Eddinghausen in space. Eddinghausen, oh, he couldn't link up on the inside. The goal was there. Good tackle for Stewart. And a good kick from Bishop finds touch just 16 metres out. And some desperate defence on both sides. Here's Bishop, one of the many kickers Cronulla have in the armoury. Only gains 10 or 15, but constantly forcing them back. O'Sullivan again. Trying to stand up the opposition. Hatch and Speechley there, though. Here's Clyde, the strength of this young fella. Daly. Daly. There really are some tremendous duels out in this paddock. Look at the centre duel. Eddinghausen and McGaw versus Meninga and Daly. And we look at fullback Docking versus Belcher. All over the paddock. Great man on man contest. And even the forwards. Underrated forwards against underrated forwards that time the ball kicked out of docking and who's there to meet him but Gary Belcher from the other end and in fact there's no fullback at home right now for Canberra Belcher's still up there really get back now well, have they got anyone to chip and chase not like Barry Russell who's on the bench and of course Canberra have Ivan Henjak on the bench both but O'Sullivan a very capable man to kick and chase what beautiful hands here's Eddinghausen over the halfway he maintains his balance here's Belcher oh he's gone without it what magnificent hands that was that put Eddinghausen in that space. Superb understanding between McGaw and Eddinghausen. It was a great pass to ET. And then that pass by Wilson just left behind. It wasn't a perfect pass, but he should have taken it. The movement could have swept on and he would have had support. Clark... Eddinghausen did beautifully to stay on his feet. Yeah. Only class players can maintain their balance like that and do it with ease. He just made that look easy. But what a lovely ball it was. We've already seen both sides making breaks through the centres or almost getting on the outside of their man if they don't. It looked to be forward just a fraction to Lazarus. See a few of the Raiders forwards just overrunning Wayne Collins. Just that little bit of lack of timing and misunderstanding without Steve Walters, a regular dummy half. Well, Sullivan thought about standing up 
Beachy again, who's caught the boot in the eye accidentally, but certainly uh, he got up looking uh, to see whether there was any marks there. Docking running it back. So here we are with 16 minutes gone. Canberra nil, Cronulla nil. Remembering that what breeze there is is favouring the Sharks in the first half. Bishop. Lost the ball. By on, says the referee. Fair decision. He lost the ball in the tackle, but not uh, after the tackle was completed. Here's Bishop flung around, and the ball spinning loose as he was about to hit the ground. Beachley's kick in behind Matthew Wood. And look at that. It's swear it was on a sequence, and he has got uh, a trickle of blood around that left eye. Matthew Wood may have been a little tentative here. He appeared to hesitate rather than going in for that ball, decided to let it bounce and then got into trouble. It's a little bit of inexperience by the 19-year-old. There is speech, and he's starting to blink a little bit with that left eye. I think you'll probably... I won't be surprised to see the trainer come on and do something with it, because maybe his sight will be impaired. Belcher almost threw that pass, and that could have been a dangerous. The ball was right on Meninga. And the intercept could have been on as well. We might see try scored from the length of the field today just because of the pace that both sides have. The big man. Todd, oh, what good tackle and what good football from Todd to get it away. Good football from both teams. Maybe you get the feeling that we've got a very even battle on our hands, don't you? I would have thought so. It's nil all. Well, not just for that reason, though. The way the game is being played, no point of giving or ask. And what a good kick. Stewart put the kick up and Davidson, you really had to feel sorry for him. He wasn't quite sure where the touchline was initially, so he didn't try to take it on the full. And then look at this, he's waiting for the bounce. <laughs> wasn't much he could do with it, was he? John Davidson's mistake there was to ever take his eye off the ball. You must keep your eye on the ball all the time or you lose it. And, uh, he should have backed away from the ball, keeping an eye on it. Metres gained, Canberra piling on 457 metres, Cronulla a little behind them. Time in possession. We'll check that in a moment. Cronulla with it. Midway half and quarter line. Bishop putting the kick in this time, and again, kicking behind Wood. Sits up all over for Belcher. Belcher running it back to the halfway line. It wasn't a legal tackle, it was high, but it was around the chest. Beachley, below McGaw high, or around the chest at least, sandwiched it. It looks a lot worse than really what it is. Belcher got straight up. So a bit of pressure. As Daly loses the football and Cronulla come up with it just inside Canberra's territory. Here's Eddinghausen. Look at that defence. Dightley won't let him go too far. <laughs> Look at the aggression of Stewart to tell Daly that everyone was back and set. <laughs> I'm going to be hit Lee that hard, I'd say no, no, no more. <laughs> Lovely dummy from Miller. Miller in space, down to the quarter line. There's nobody with him, though. You can't believe there wasn't someone with Miller. They should know he's going by now. Oh, gee, he let them, uh, left them out the dry like last week's washing, didn't he? Beautifully picked up Speechley. And here's Eddinghausen. And Eddinghausen can't keep it going. And it's going to be a penalty. Good referee from Harrigan because he's ruled that the Canberra player, Bowie Daly, was up inside the five. He played the advantage. And this will give Wilson a good opportunity to post the first points of the match. Now, this is a reason that Gavin Miller wasn't, didn't have support. Jonathan Docking was held back there in the back play. May I ask the question, would Barry Russell have been there? Jonathan Docking would have been there if he wasn't obstructed. You'll notice the, player, the players there, the, the Canberra players, some of them were still running to get back on side. The referee realised that 
didn't blow the whistle initially, but when they became involved in the play, he ruled and deemed them to be offside. Allowed the advantage, which is good to see. Alan Wilson moves in, his first kick of the afternoon, as straight as a die. And with a back dot, John Galenzo and Ross Pickard raise the flags and Cronulla lead Canberra by two points to nil. And the Canberra supporters are enjoying every minute of it, why not? One of the youngest uh, groups of supporters in the club, the Cronulla supporters I should say. Gee, just for a moment, Eddinghausen and Davidson were on a collision course, and Davidson wished that Eddinghausen had taken, I think, at the end after being on the receiving end of that trunch tackle from Meninga. And Davidson isn't too well as he walks back into position. Staines. Break by Gavin Miller just before that penalty was awarded as a danger sign for Canberra. You just cannot allow Miller to run across field and throw a dummy. Another penalty against Canberra. And again, it's Lazarus for fiddling around with the man trying to play the ball. In fact, it's Todd, is it? No, it wasn't Glenn Lazarus, the man in the tackle. Certain it was Lazarus. Yes, there it is. He just drags him down. Presumably the referee must have called held a little early because it was to be a fair enough tackle. Well, that's twice that Lazarus has been caught by the referee. And all you're doing is conceding six more tackles. He didn't think it would take long before the trainer had to do something there for the wounded speechly. Cut left eye. You can see the blood trickling into his eye at times and he really had to blink. And obviously his sight was being impaired. Quite accidental. It was just in that tackle. I think it was O'Sullivan. Back on the inside. Here's Eddinghausen down to the quarter line. Miller very much involved again. Porter, Staines, Hatch, Docking, Docking, Docking in the middle of the sand pit, stands them up. Oh, starting to unload. Last tackle against the Sharks as they come the short side through Miller. He slips it to Bishop who kicks it straight across field. Now this could be dangerous, they can move it quickly here. Daly is beautifully grasped though by Staines. But there were three or four Canberra players out there initially to one or two Cronulla players and often you've seen a team with a, a cross field kick like that turn defence into great attack. had stood back half a metre but not too far and he plays it forward and he must have realised he was in trouble because I think he realised when he put his head down there wasn't a marker there but he didn't have a quick look penalties 5-1 to Cronulla when you have a look at him he puts his head down he realises that no one in front of him he didn't look up again when he put the ball down but watch him he's looking down he's never ever once looked up to see whether anyone was in front of him Guy Pickett did arrive just a touch late, but I still think it was fair enough for a decision by referee Harrigan. From Canberra's point of view, of course, I would like to think that the penalty could have been down the other end of the park. This could be uh, another vital decision. really has turned into be a beautiful spring day in Sydney. Wilson moves in, his second kick of the afternoon isn't as good as the first, he's missed it. And Dean Lance looks up at the sky and says, thank you, sir. Cronulla 2, Canberra 0.
15 minutes remaining in the first half. <laughs> Stewart restarts play with the dropout from the quarter line. When Dean Lance looks at the replay of uh, that last penalty, Fletcher he'll tell us that Guy Pickin did arrive late and that technically the referee made the incorrect decision. But I think in the real world of football, where it's not as clear cut, the referee was entitled to blow his whistle. Bad mistake from Wilson, and now Canberra have got the ball down on the quarter line. There's no need to throw the pass. O'Sullivan, coin. Now Belcher, Belcher up to the quarter line, off legs to Daly, Daly for the quarter line, great cover defence. Eddinghausen around his legs. Walk up, man. walk up. Canberra breaking away, capitalising on the mistake from Cronulla, and look at Daly, he is very determined, but a superb tackle cut down by Eddinghausen. I think he thought he had the pace to get there, Daly, when he first got the ball. Well, he was determined to get on the outside and go for the corner. Ferguson had gone inside, but it was Daly or nothing. Just shows you the incredible pace that Andrew Heddinghausen has. He picked him up quickly. But he went low because he knows that Daly is very strong in the thighs. He's gone in hard and low and just chopped his legs out from under him. And used the touchline as well. Thank you very much. There's number 14 for Canala, Glenn Cole. He's uh, warming up on the sideline, shortly to go on the field. And Bradley Tyde, Billy Groggy. Yes, Glenn Coleman's gone on, and Guy Pickin has come off, so Wilson will go into the forwards. And he knocked that on, Bishop. So there's Pickin leaving the field, limping from the field. And Wilson will now go from the wing into the forwards. Picking a definite loss for the Sharks because not only uh, does he take the ball up strongly, but he does hit very hard. Though I suppose we haven't seen as much of him today as we did early in the match on Tuesday night. Maybe he's gone into the game with that injury. Yeah, maybe and that's so. the reason why. Guy Picking, disappointed. Talking to Dr. Peter Maloof, the Pranola doctor. On the run around, this is O'Sullivan. Good defence there from Speechy because though Sullivan had got around Speechy, there was a chance of setting up something on the right side. Coyne hit by McGall. Last tackle against the Raiders. Stewart kicking for the Western touch. I won't find it. Docking says thank you as he picks it up well back in his quarter line. Good ankle tap. And good defence then from Lazarus as well. Stewart, the ankle tapper, his hamstring seems to be standing up okay. He dived full length to just get a finger on Eddinghausen's heel. I should say docking, sir. Danny Lee. Nobody there. Last tackle against the Sharks. Miller comes to blindside. The little grubber kick again. And it's not an easy kick for Belcher to bring back into the field of play. And in fact, he can't. Line dropout. Bishop in the back play was receiving some attention. He seems okay now. Gavin Miller thinking all the time. He takes the ball to the defence and then the most delicate of little chips. Perfect length on it, made it very awkward for Belcher to gather in and gave the tacklers plenty of time to get through and pin him. Davidson and Docking up there and then finishing it off Staines. Stewart restarts play with the line dropout. Not a good one. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. And Cronulla lead Canberra by two points to nil. Speechley. Wilson. Wilson, oh, 
Oh, he almost got all the way through. Only some defence originally from Clyde prevented what was, I reckon, going to be a certain try. Now can Granada put one on? Last tackle. Bishop. Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen tries the little grubber. It pops up well for Belcher. And Belcher does get it back into the field of play. Despite the attentions of both Eddinghausen and Docking. As Clyde brings it out. But what a telling little ankle tap that was that put Wilson off balance because he was in a yawning big hole. Beaten a couple of tacklers. Meninga's beaten a couple too. He gets it outside the quarter line. They just haven't had the football, Canberra. They've given away too many penalties. Five won the penalty count. Can't win football games when you're doing it like that. And quick hands and boots over the halfway. Now he's looking inside. He hasn't got the support that he wanted initially. And he has to take the tackle. Meninga loomed up, but it was too late. Now here it is, Clyde, Clyde over the quarter line, sent it away to Belcher, and Belcher's racing away to score. Try to Canberra, they lead by four points to two. Canberra is such a dangerous attacking unit. We saw Matthew Wood scoot down the touchline, he couldn't convert it into a try. But as the Cronulla defence is scrambling after that first break, look at Ricky Stewart, he threads his way through. Finds Clyde, who burst straight into open space. The defence was threadbare and hadn't recovered, and Gary Belcher, backing up on that blind side, comes straight through. Cronulla never recovered from the first break, which was well put on by quick hands from the back. And again, this is very skillful stuff. Beautifully drawing in the fullback, did Clyde, and Belcher there to polish it off. So his 14th try of the year. And the man who's been re-signed by the Raiders until the end of the 1992 season scores the first try of the 1989 playoffs. The Cronulla side would be devastated by that. They've gone so close to putting one on. But they'll go in at half time at this stage behind. Trying to convert the try, it's going to swing away across the face of the uprights. And so Canberra lead Cronulla by four points to two. Here's the Raiders on the sixth tackle. Now Mark McGaw came in very quickly. That forced Stewart to recorrect, step in and put Clyde in the clear. And Gary Belcher finished it off with a great try. That gets the Raiders back into it. Yes, you could almost say the try was against the run of play, but as we said, don't be surprised if there are some tries scored the length of the field. And the time in possession dominated by Cronulla, so that try coming against the run of possession at least, and really territory, because it's been all Cronulla camped down the Canberra end. Interesting decision there by Tim Sheens and Captain Mal Meninga to give the goal kicking to the young Matthew Wood. He must have a cool head on his shoulders. Because there's also Meninga and Belcher are useful goal kickers in the team. Not to forget one Earl Daly. Yep. Well, plenty, but they've given it to the young fella. Stewart. And that ball, not an easy one for Doggy to pick up, but he, he had a go at it because I dare say he's still got sky high confidence. A lot of times he would have trapped it with the boot first, but still cause him any major problems and uh, in the game the other day when Cronulla played Brisbane in that playoff Cronulla carried the ball for almost 2,000 metres and they held it in possession for 50 of the 80 minutes the tackle before this was a real hit by Glenn Lazarus and he has jolted a few of these sharks here's the man who is really coming up and hitting very very hard and he's in that tackle again speechly now what does Tuesday night do to you Warren and, uh, is it is it the sort of thing that means you come out and uh, get rid of the lethargy in the first half and perform better in the second half? Yeah. As Belcher makes another break over the quarter line, or is it the sort of thing that you become so weary from the Tuesday night that the second half becomes, uh, or you become almost legless? I think that if you get on top, you can stay on top. Here's Ricky Stewart over the halfway. He's got Collins back on the inside. He's got nobody across here on this side of the field. Collins quickly into dummy half, though. 
And now bring it up quickly as Meninga, and Meninga goes ahead, but he can't slip the pass to Coyne. The Raiders really on the attack at the moment. Collins, away it comes. This is uh, as it went through O'Sullivan. Out it goes to Daly. Daly trying to stand them up. 13 metres out. Now O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan going on his own. O'Sullivan will go all the way. O'Sullivan puts the ball down. It's a try to Canberra. And Canberra lead 8-2 with the kick to come. The Cronulla defence has cut to ribbons at the moment. They're at sixes and sevens. The Raiders machine is on a roll. They're moving the ball, keeping it alive, and there's very little you can do to stop it. But what a fine dash it was to actually plant the ball by Chris O'Sullivan. Bang, down it goes. After the defence had started to open up, O'Sullivan moved into dummy half. He saw the small hole and just manages to sneak through it. Showing plenty of pace off the mark. A little hole was there, a little bit of hesitation on the part of the defence. Just hung off him, looking after other men on the other side of him, and through goes O'Sullivan. So, Chris O'Sullivan, his sixth try of the year. He's nicknamed Sully, and he's certainly the most faithful Raider of them all because he's been there since the beginning in 1982. And the Canberra supporters, why wouldn't they be happy? The reserves of into next week's playoffs will continue on. Their firsts are now leading by eight points to two. And of course, they've got their champion President's Cup team running around tomorrow in the major preliminary semi-final. Matthew Wood comes in. There's the kick. He converts the O'Sullivan try. And Canberra skipped away to a very handy lead. Right on half time, they lead by 10 points to two. Yes, here's a fine individual effort from uh, Chris O'Sullivan, but the damage was done early with the big runs from some of the bigger players in the team. Clyde and Meninga, they're dominant now, and they're going to be a handful. As Cronulla restart play and how they must be thinking at the moment of how close they've gone to a couple of tries themselves and in the space of five minutes they've conceded ten points and that really all started from Stewart's great run after the first try Warren came from Matthew Wood's great run sucking in defence and, and quickly going on with the roll once you've got the defence shot quickly capitalising by moving the ball to where the weaknesses are you're asking David uh, the reaction of Cronulla to uh, coming up after Tuesday night. I feel that if they were able to get on top, they could stay on top. They'd have the legs and the spirit to keep going. But if they do get behind, at the moment they're starting to slip, it's going to be very hard to lift those legs late in the second half when they're down. Coleman just outside the quarter line. Eddinghausen. So here's Cronulla. Gee, wouldn't you be dispirited the way that they've they played so well for 25 minutes of this match, seemingly in control. But that's the nature of these two teams. I'm not saying that they're finished with yet, because both these teams are capable of scoring tries that quickly. But it's a tall order that they face at the moment. Well, they showed the other day they've got the attacking brilliance. There's a long way to go in this game yet. That's a very good kick too from Bishop. When does he bring Russell on? Now that he needs Russell for his attacking skills. Bishop only had a 10 degree angle here, but plants the ball beautifully down the game 40 metres. Barry Russell expected to make his mark in the second half, and how the Cronulla Shark fans hope it is a mark in the form of a four pointer or two. Kick finds touch. And we'll hardly have time for the scrum to pack down. In fact, I think that we're going to just see the scrum pack down, or will we? Clock says there's five seconds left. The camera players taking their time. You don't blame them. They, they want the half time whistle to blow. 
There's the siren. The gore. Tackle. And so referee Bill Harrigan says that's enough for us for the first half. Those two tries by Canberra in the last 10 minutes of the first half give them the lead. Beltran by Miller. There's plenty of pressure on him to rejuvenate the Sharks to try and put something on in the opening moments of the second half. Ball falls off the mound. Rather anticlimactic. There's the restarters. Wilson kicks the ball over the touchline on the full. And you wouldn't believe it, would you? Canberra get penalised at the start of the match for being in front of the kicker. And now Wilson, at the start of the second half, get penalised for kicking it out on the full. Things you wouldn't do all season in a big match. The most basic, simple error. Schoolboy football. And both sides guilty of making the errors at the opening of each half. Stewart finds touch. John Beard on the sideline. Here's halftime news, David. There's a change in the Cronulla side. David Harris, 17, going on for Michael Speechy. That's a bit of a blow in itself. Alan Fitzgibbon realised he's got to lift his side, and they need some sort of inspiration early. They've got to get on that scoreboard. While Timmy Sheen's in the other room, he's quite happy with things. 10-2, they didn't have much ball, didn't use up uh, a great deal of petrol in the first half. He's looking for them to go right on with the job. Meninga. Captain Meninga. Belcher. Coin. Mistake from the kickoff was what Cronulla absolutely did not need. They needed to steady things and get it down the other end. O'Sullivan, the little grubber kick came off Harris's legs, and here's Belcher. Belcher was uh, certainly interfered with after he put that kick in. The referee says play on. Belcher looks up. I don't think he could believe that, but he was certainly uh, impeded. And Danny uh, Lee just uh, leads with the shoulder. I think it was Danny Lee. There it is, just slightly knocking him off, and I'd say that uh, was sufficient to have incurred a penalty. Well, he didn't arrive there much later than Doggy. It certainly stopped him in his tracks. And look at the top tacklers for Canberra. Glenn Lazarus has made 23 tackles, and a lot of those have hurt. Top Here's a chance, but as uh, McGaw's over the halfway, the pass he tried to get it away to Coleman, and what good football from Ferguson to put himself in between McGaw and Coleman, really giving them no chance. Ferguson sat out there in the middle of it. Now Daly, Daly up to the halfway, Daly, he shows a clean pair of heels. He's got Matthew Wood with him. Now is he going to score? It's going to be Wood. Yes, try! Try. Canberra will be back here next Saturday in the minor semi-final now. They lead Cronulla 14-2. The breakdown this side by Cronulla had pulled McGaw right out of the play. Canberra realised they were short out the other side and on goes Daly. Daly looks as if he may even score from this point. But Jonathan Docking covers him up. Matthew Wood has heaps of pace. Look at him turn it on here. Davidson can't go with him. Eddinghausen just manages to hang on to him but he can't hold him. Daly, the man just lines it up on the inside. He knows Matthew Wood, and Matthew Wood had plenty of pace even to outstrip Eddinghausen enough to get to the line. Nice pun, he almost outstripped Matthew Wood, Eddinghausen, because he almost lost his shorts. Matthew Wood, third try of the year, and now with the chance to try, or the chance to convert his own try. Cronulla devastated now. Why wouldn't they be, David? They've just made a superb break down the far side where McGaw has cut right through. He just couldn't get the pass to Coleman because of good work by Johnny Ferguson. But Canberra, this attacking brilliance that they have, they are so dangerous and they've turned it around and gone straight back up the other end. So Matthew Wood, who became a member of that junior squad a couple of years ago in Canberra, set up by Wayne Bennett and now repaying the faith. A difficult kick for Wood. He struck it pretty well. It's hanging in the air. It's there! What a great kick! Wood converts his own try. And Canberra rakes away to lead by 16 points to two. It's going to be very hard for Cronulla from this point on. As I said, they couldn't afford to get behind. That's right where they are now. It's going to be very hard to lift weary legs.
As you said, the weary legs are there, but of course mentally it's so much harder when you're behind. 18,186 the crowd. It's considering the teams involved in today's playoffs. A pretty fair crowd. Miller slipping the defence. When Lazarus leaving the ball behind, and that gives Cronulla the chance to hit back. They have to hit back if they're to stay alive. And they have to hit back shortly. They've already had to replace both Pickin and Speechley. Porter not too well in the back play either. And he's not well at all, Michael Porter. I think his expression said it all. I think the knee might be playing up. Now, trainer says that's it, Michael is coming off. Well, that's another blow for them. Dejection in his eyes. And here you'll see the penalty against Canberra. Ruling the coin. Flicked that ball out of the player Danny Lee's hands. He seems to have recovered a bit there. He's nodding up towards Alan Fitzgibbon in the grandstand. Maybe he has hit a nerve or something. David Hatch deciding that he'll take the two points here to bring Cronulla within 12 points. If he gets this kick, it'll be 16 to 4. Two converted tries. He may have been tempted to go for the try. The kick from Wilson. Hits the posts into the end goal area. Oh, Chief Ferguson had to do pretty well to grab that ball as he got it back into the field of play he has. Oh, how did he do that? Like a torpedo, Ferguson. Belcher. This is Cronulla's chance, they know it. If they can just pin Canberra here, well, they may be able to get back into it, but they have to start turning the scoreboard around pretty soon. They led 2-0. Well into the first half, and then in the space of 15 minutes, conceded three tries. There's Alan Wilson, who's down in the end goal area at the other end of the field. And he's injured as well. And, of course, with Porter still hobbling out there, Cronulla now really are the walking wounded, having already used up two of their replacements. This is one of the replacement players, David Harris. You can see the confidence of the Raiders' defence pummeling Cronulla here in their own territory. They're wrapping him up and driving him backwards. And there's Porter now. Let's see how quickly he gets to his feet. Seems to have recovered. A very effective kick as Belcher runs the ball back. Belcher slips the defence. Now Belcher's got Matthew Wood on the inside. He tries to get away from Bishop. The pass finally comes to Wood. Wood, only 16 metres out. Meninga, away to Todd. Coin, 10 metres out. Now here's Lazarus down the centre. Lazarus can't slip the pass though. They're only a couple of metres out. Collins decides to go the short side. That ball came up at Cronulla player's head and Matthew Wood picks it up. Back on the inside, intercepted by Bishop. And Cronulla get away with it. Penalty goes against Canberra. Meninga penalised for not allowing him to play the ball. And he can't believe it. <laughs> here's Matthew Wood. Tries to slip the ball back in for what would have been the final game breaker. Bishop intercepts. Then Meninga gets, says, get hold of him. Meninga claims that the referee hadn't called help, but more importantly, he says that Bishop tried his foot right onto that touch line. He certainly did. The touch judge put the flag up, but this is what the referee is saying, deliberately putting him into touch. Meninga had stopped going on with the tackle. He didn't force Bishop to put his foot on that touch line. Lee down the centre. Wood, 
Wilson off and Pappas on the field for Cronulla. So the Sharks really are looking war-torn at the moment with so many replacements. Picken off, Speechley off, Wilson off. And I think John Beard did originally when Arthur Pappas was warming up on the touchline. He was warming up to replace Mike McWhorter who was down injured. As Ferguson shows some of his old magic. That's correct, David, but uh, Pappas is on the field. He's only a lightweight forward, and you'll find this task fairly daunting, but the Raiders are just too big, too fast, and too fresh at the moment. Daly has lost that football. Bishop allows it with a very cool head to cross the touchline. Instead of picking it up, though Sullivan lurking to push him across the touchline and therefore give the feed the other way. You see the ball go loose. Now watch Bishop very coolly allowed to cross the touchline so that he makes sure that Cronulla gets the feed. McGaw, the cutout pass to Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen can't get the pass away and great defence from Meninga. Slides him across the touchline. First tackle. And he is blueing over there, Eddinghausen, saying, come on, John Davidson, you should have been on the inside of me. I've got no risk that that's what he was saying to John Davidson, Andrew Eddinghausen. If looks could have killed. There's the error count. Pretty even right across the board all up. That's not an indication of the play. On the quarter line, and Canberra's end of the park. I'm sure the missed tackles must be starting to mount against Cronulla because that's what's happening. There's another one. Belcher. What happens when you get tired? Also, your morale gets broken, and there are signs that this could become what we saw on Tuesday night, where we saw a, a real battle between two sides, and then once the loser, or what turns out to be the loser, cracks, the floodgates open. Once, there's the hole, once, a hole, once they find a hole in the dike, that's the end of it. The water just comes gushing through. The kick from Stewart down to the quarter line, and Doggy runs it back. A good defence. O'Sullivan up there following the kick. If Barry Russell is 100% fit, I think Alan Fitzgibbon's got to get him out of the field. He's got to hope that uh, they can turn this around. They've got to get some quick tries. Bishop. Out wide. Staines, great defence. Barry Russell. He's been waiting all day so far. Patch almost at the halfway line. <laughs> McGaw. McGaw versus Daly and Daly wins. Remember that great battle they had in the match down at Canberra. Lee. Trying the Gene Miles type basketball pass but unable to do it. Last tackle so Porter puts the kick in. Belcher. Belcher, Ferguson, Ferguson gets away from one and chased and grabbed and put on the deck by Pampas. Todd, taken by Miller. Gee, that was a good ball that was slipped away by Lazarus. Here's an indication of time in possession now. Both teams very even, so you can see that uh, Canberra have really turned this game around in all aspects. O'Sullivan. It just goes to show you that when you've got the football, you've got to score tries. This be safety first, just a little kick deep inside Cronulla's territory. Make Cronulla do all the running. Coleman. Coleman over the quarter line. Oh, he had Docking backing up with him. Daly had stuck with Bobby. Good football from Clyde, really. McGaw. I'm sure who won that. I see McGaw coming in to try and do the work of the forwards. It's a good ball from Miller, but they've gone without it. And here's uh, Stewart. Stewart gets around Harris, back on the inside. Here's Wood. Belcher. And quickly, well, gee, if Todd had gone on with that, had a bit of space down the left side of the field, Canberra. Lazarus just takes it ahead, steadies it down. It's not so much that the Sharks are missing tackles as they're not putting the man on the deck. The unloads are very easy. Canberra st uh, standing and getting passes away. 
Clyde floats it over the top. Here's Belcher. Beautiful hands back. It comes to Clyde. He's got plenty of space in front of him. Over the quarter line. Now this is Meninga. He picks the pass away to O'Sullivan. But a glorious tackle by Harris. Ford pass, though, says the referee. There are a couple of very much line ball passes involved there. Harrigan has picked one of them up. They were changing the angle. Bradley Clyde bursting through. And that's the one I think he actually did call back, but it must have been close to flat to Meninga. It's Paul Martin, number 15, is taking the field for Matthew Wood. He's playing the right wing. Scrum won by Cronulla. Harris. Matthew Wood limping to the touchline. And that will mean that Meninga, Daly or Belcher will take over the goal kicking as well. Harris. The replacement who's come on, Paul Martin. Has heaps of toe as well. And Miller showing the ball, showing a clean pair of heels. Can he get the pass away? What a great solo run, but a great pass. Here's Coleman, the man goes to Dumping, and Dumping, oh, he's lost the ball. And now Daly running it back. Johnny Ferguson has just a genius in defensive play. First of all, he got on the outside of Miller and prevented Miller getting the pass away. Then he has chased across field, got rid of one of them, and finally is the man who causes Dockman to lose the ball. Just brilliant football to knock it down. He wasn't certain he could make the tackle, but he's gone for the ball first up. Here's Alan Wilson returning to the field from the head bin. He'll go on probably for uh, Arthur Pappas. Well, that at least uh, eases their injury situation a little bit, because it means they can still use two replacements instead of what we thought originally was only one. It was a great a bit of football from Miller to start with that. A superb defensive positional play by Johnny Ferguson. Ferguson does occasionally miss the head-on tackle, but he positions himself so well that he gives himself every chance of making the side on ones, and he prevented a try there, no risk. Pappas off, Wilson back on. Miller. No runners for Miller. Isn't that the difference between this game and Tuesday night when we saw Lee, Pickin and Porter just keep going and make ground all day in the first three tackles. And the three men you mentioned came out determined to make plenty of ground up the middle. Now yeah, McGaw's kick. Get back. Oh, Belcher's knocked that on. Gary Belcher went to take it with his foot and when the ball evaded his boot he was taken by surprise and grabbed at the ball rather than letting it go he didn't have much time to make his mind up but it missed his foot and uh, he outfilled himself just tried to flick it up into his hands wonder whether he would have tried that if the score wasn't 16-2 there's that ball will come out of there eventually and eventually bishop gets it and the scrum seven apiece and granola have had plenty of possession Penalty still favour Cronulla, 7-2. Hatch, Staines. Hatch again, the dummy half. Lee. 20 metres out. Can the Shark put one on to get back into the business? As Miller goes straight down the centre again. He's got support. Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen will score. What's the last pass forward? Doesn't matter anyway. Then back in business. Miller again, left them out. Henning with a magnificent run. You cannot silence Gavin Miller, can you? Look here, the run around just to take a little bit of the defence off him. The missed tackle on the inside, Glenn Lazarus it was, and a flick back inside to Eddinghausen, who was almost obstructed trying to back up. But great football by Gavin Miller. Here it is, the run around. Bishop pulls a couple of defenders off Miller. He then changes direction. The man on the inside missing the tackle was Lazarus. And Eddinghausen, spearing through, manages to back up so well. And this, is from, the, this is from the camera on top of the grandstand, would you believe? The tackle should have been made. That pass was definitely a fair one. His 14th try of the year. He scored 17 tries last year in just 20 games. Scored five against Illawarra last week. And he scored 20 tries, would you believe, from 20 
two games at fullback in the off-season in the United Kingdom, Andrew Eddinghausen. Wilson. The chance to reduce the margin to eight points. There's the kick. He struck that sweetly. It's there. And so Cronulla are back in the match. They lead. Or trail Canberra. Canberra lead by 16 points to eight. It's his to play the ball. Too wide out to Miller. Brings Bishop around. He's given too much room there. He's confronted by a front rower. That's the matchup he probably needs. Inside to 18. He goes over. Miller's got to continue the surge. But 20 minutes remaining in the line of preliminary semi-final as Canberra restart play. And Bishop trapping it with the boot, boot allows Cronulla to bring it back safely. Something, of course, which Belcher didn't do down the other end. And within two tackles, Cronulla has scored a converted try. Glenn Lazarus missed the tackle on Miller, but he is still leading the tackle count by a mile for Canberra from 28 tackles. David Hatch, as always, leading the way for Cronulla. When are we going to see Mark Lowry come on? This big strapping young fellow from Canberra who's on the fresh reserves bench. One would think that Henjack will stay there for a while yet. And Hatch makes a great break. He slips the pass away. It's Danny Staines. What a pity it wanted one of the big centres. If it had been a centre or docking, it would have been a try. Now they continue it on on the last tackle. Miller down to the quarter line. Miller's got support. He slips the pass away to Wilson, and Wilson takes the tackle. A good tackle, but it's a penalty. Offside against Canberra. I think it's against the Canberra player taking a supporter out of the play. Obstruction. Dean Lance. Well, Lance was who affected the tackle at the end. So he must have pushed someone out of the road to get there, but he certainly was the player who tackled Wilson. In the back way, Miller is very groggy. Now, was he knocked rotten or something? Miller after he slipped the pass. Here's Gavin Miller looking for support and a high tackle coming in there, but it wasn't Dean Lance, the man who hit Miller. Now, has he sent someone to the sin bin for an offence on Gavin Miller because he wore headgear? But the bloke in the headgear who hit Miller was O'Sullivan. I didn't see Dean Lance do anything untoward in that movement. Here's the high tackle. Chris O'Sullivan it was who took Gavin Miller out. And it looked like a high tackle. It certainly stunned Gavin Miller. The interesting thing is, is, is it for offside, which it seemed initially he ruled it for, or obstruction? Now, he certainly is, he had two movements, the referee, Bill Harrigan. Now, if it was obstruction, it's very hard to see Dean Lance obstructing anyone because he affected the tackle on Wilson. Unless, of course, he's pinched the wrong bloke because he was wearing headgear. The answer's a pineapple and the chance to reduce the margin to just one converted try. Off the boot, it looks good. Let's go! Canberra lead for another 16, 10, 17 minutes to go in the match. Let's have another look at the incident here. Here's Gavin Miller looking for space, looking for support. Look at the tackle from Chris O'Sullivan, number six. Whack. May have glanced off his shoulder, but it hit him in the head. And Lance coming from an offside position with the, from the previous play the ball has affected the tackle. I think that's what the referee in the end has awarded the penalty for. And Sinbin for a professional foul, presumably. Staines brings it back. What a comeback from Cronulla. Only 10 minutes ago, we were riding them off. Now they're back in the hunt. We were entitled to when they were down 16-2. Matthew Wood with his injured ankle. But of course, Canberra is still in front. They lead 16-10. And the man with the ball, the inspiration in the turnaround, Gavin Miller. Wilson. Bishop Harris. Great tackle, Meninga was first up, who jolted Harris. I hate to see that sight coming at me. And he threads it along the touchline, Bishop 
with uncanny, uncanny accuracy. Paul Bishop has kicked superbly right throughout this game. And now the squeeze is on Canberra. They've been doing it easy up until the last few minutes. Now they have to soak up some pressure and steady their own play. And the replacement still sitting on the bench. Mark Harry, Ivan Henjak. In the back play, Mark Bell was there as well. And that's just what Canberra wanted. Here's the scrum. Canberra down in the scrum, but that wasn't what the penalty was awarded for. He appeared to find a, I should say Cronulla down the scrum, but he seemed to find someone breaking from the scrum early or coming around offside. You should notice where the hooker was. Wayne Collins was flat on his backside. Yes, I think he ruled that the, uh, they screwed the scrum then, but I thought it was unfortunate for Cronulla because uh, they were certainly on their backside, the front row for Canberra. Lazarus with the ball. 14 and a half minutes to go. Just a converted try the difference as Mal Meninga gets within 33 metres of Granada's line. Collins away to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan just outside the quarter line. Collins, Stewart thinking about the foul goal. It looks good off the boot, but no wide. He struck it sweetly. Good thinking too by Ricky Stewart. To extend the lead to seven points, then... The Sharks would need more than a converted try, and this kick, solid off the boot, just missing to the right of the uprights as he faced them. Gee, struck it sweetly, didn't he? And no doubt, his years of rugby union training assisting there. Now, Cronulla, can they do something from here? They've got match winners out there. Here's one of them, and there's another one. What a brilliant take from Eddinghausen, but the referees ruled the forward pass. Desperation there from Mark McGaw. Of course, it's easier from the sidelines to judge what's forward and what's not when you're bursting trying to get clear. But he took a risk and didn't come off because the ball travelled forward. Here's McGaw. Takes on Daly, flicks it back inside. And beautiful hands by Eddinghausen to at least take the ball. And that is just an example of why Cronulla aren't out of this game because they can score tries from anywhere with those two players in concert. Lance back on the field after his stint in the sin bin. And Meninga down the centre. Meninga steaming down the centre of the ruck. Only 20 metres out. The big fella coming into his own in the last quarter of an hour. Stewart, away it comes across to Clyde. 15 metres out. Lance. Martin. Collins. Stewart. O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan has the shot at field goal. And I think he's popped it over. He has. Sullivan bangs it over the black dot for a vital point. Canberra lead Granada, 17 points to 10. 12 and a half minutes remaining in the match. What a cool head here from Chris O'Sullivan. The ball was looking as if it had been swept across the backs. That's what the defence thought. O'Sullivan stops, props and pops right over. He'll be doing advertisements for Kellogg's next. <laughs> Ivan Henjak. At this stage, I don't think he'll get a run this afternoon. And I think with only 12 minutes left on the clock, he'll be back here next Saturday afternoon for the minor semi-final. Wilson restarts. Clyde brings it back. Take a, a lot of heart from Cronulla now. That field goal might have taken the steam out of them. 12 minutes remaining, they're still in it, but they have to come back with the same spirit they've shown over the last 10 minutes. It was a great comeback. But remember, if there's a time when they're going to show the weariness, you'd think it was the last 10 minutes of the match, and they're now trailing by seven points. Stewart kicking for the open spaces. Docking gets a bad bounce. Is it going to go dead? Docking bringing it back. Docking, great running from Docking. Showing the ball up to the quarter line. And a good tackle from Chris O'Sullivan. Docking must be close to the form fullback in the competition at the moment. He's had even a better game than Gary Belcher so far today. Ooh, gee, Meninga almost tackled Harris before he got that ball. 
Wilson. <laughs> yes, there's the fresh replacement for the Canberra side. Mark Lowry in 41, Ivan Henjack in 40. Here's Bishop. Floats it over the top and then plucked out of the air by Daly. Daly right on his game today. And a close finish. I think he's won the duel of the centres. Not quite sure who Enjack was meant to replace, but uh, Stewart in the back play starting to limp a fraction. As Lazarus gets away from the opposition. Lazarus, a good strong run. Look at this fellow go. That's why he won a representative jumper this year. Collins. Stewart, the long pass, finds uh, O'Sullivan. Quick hands from Belcher. Away it goes Malinga. Here's Martin. Martin races around. Puts the ball down. Scores the try. And Canberra leading by 21 points to 10. Great back line this Canberra side have. They move the ball from one side to the other. This is what Cronulla did the other night. Long passes to get out where the open spaces are. That pass just stopped O'Sullivan for the moment, but Belcher chiming in creates the extra man. Now look at the positional play here from Martin. He comes back on the angle and that left three of the Sharks going towards the corner post, but he was going the other direction. Great football, great combination between the centre Meninga and Martin, the winger. He changed the direction. O'Sullivan and Bishop, I uh, should say, O'Sullivan did well on the inside to get the ball out there. Meninga changes the direction. Perfect reading of it by Martin and in his scoop for the match winner. His first try of the year, but one that he'll remember. This fellow has loads of talent. It's been a brave performance from the Cronulla Sharks this year. Laurie Daly taking over the kicking duties and misses it from almost in front. But he can afford to smile because he knows he'll be back here next Saturday. Yes, well, here's the play of the ball. They've certainly got overs out there. The Cronulla defence a little slow on this occasion. There's Johnny Davis on the right of your screen. He should have come in probably there and knocked off Mal Meninga. He tended to run with him for a change, put himself out of play. And, of course, Paul Martin read it beautifully and came inside. That's a try to uh, Cronulla that will seal the victory. A couple of replacements also coming on. Wilson restarts play yet again for Cronulla. Those replacements are out there on the field. Ivan Henjak and Mark Lowry. They've replaced Glenn Lazarus and Ricky Stewart. As Meninga's gone straight through. Meninga's got support. He's up to the halfway. He's down to the quarter line. Slips the pass. Henjak. Henjak throws it away to Coyne. And Coyne will score a sensational try. Magnificent stuff from the Raiders. Blistering backline play, and this is what the other semi finalists are going to have to contend with. Confidence from their own end of the field. Belcher slips the pass back to Meninga, who busts and brushes them off. And he sets sail downfield. Meninga, who has such deceptive pace, just cruising, looks for support. Henjack only just come onto the field, backs up beautifully. And Gary Coyne, the second rower, had the pace to be alongside them. That's great backing up from Coyne. But look at this change of direction in their own territory. They're full of confidence now, the Raiders. They know they've got the pace, the size. Meninga, such an awesome prospect. The most feared centre in the competition. Henjack, the man who no one can believe is on the bench except that Ricky Stewart's playing so well. And Gary Coyne did superbly to back up. His fourth try of the year. The big fellow, he'd enjoy that one because that really was a super try. I can't help but feel sorry for Cronulla. Naturally, coming through the midweek game must have taken something out of them, but losing Pickin earlier and then Speechley at half time. And I don't think Speechley was well for most of the first half. And in that latter part of the second half was where their defence started to crack. They've really had a tough time of it today. But Henjak is already off the field after only being on there for a minute and being part of a try. Well, that's sensational as the ball is kicked over the black dot by Chris O'Sullivan and Canberra. They've raced away to lead by 27 points to 10.
Yes, well, here it is. There's no better sight. It's the kickoff. Belcher with the reverse pass. The big fella side of the gap. They're really a great attack inside the Canberra side. When they get into full flight, they're very hard to catch. All the time in the world. And, of course, Ivan Henjak sprints along. I think he hurt his hamstring in that. Has been replaced to date. So, uh, bad news for the Canberra camp there. Ricky Stewart uh, already off the field also with a, with a problem. Daly lost the ball there. Yes, you notice clearly when he got the ball, Hendrak, the second stride, you see the little twinge of the right hamstring. He dead said did something to it. So he's been on the field. Well, all he'd been on the field for was that. The ball was kicked off. He was replaced while Daly was having the shot at goal. And as he hobbled from the field, that's bad luck for Canberra. Tim Sheens made the comment the other day that Hendrak wasn't fit enough to get through 80 minutes. And I'm sure now, even though he uh, was involved in that try, he wishes that he left him off the field a little bit longer because another tear of that nagging hamstring for Hendrak means that it's likely he won't be available for uh, many more of these finals games. Another mistake. Belcher floats it out wide. Quickly, the ball comes away now towards Martin on that wing. Martin... Pass just a little behind Martin. He just had to hold up for it. And otherwise, he might well have kicked away. Lance. The Clyde, they might score again here down the right flank. Belcher. Coin. O'Sullivan. Daly. Daly. Daly's gone straight through. The little chip and chase. Daly will win the race easily, and that's another try. 71 points to 10. The green machine is unstoppable now. Granola, their morale has shot to pieces, and the Raiders, with their confidence up, just unstoppable. Here it is. Laurie Daly should have been tackled by David Harris, but he pulled clear. Daly, a very strong man, then kicks into the end goal. Gavin Miller started the chase and realised, well, it's either Daly gets the ball or it goes dead in goal, and that's what happens. Daly won the race. But look at the strength of Daly. He appeared to be held here. David Harris and also uh, the winger Wilson come in to try and hang on to him. David Harris had him, but Daly is as strong as a bull. He's a young, strong man, and he puts that ball into the in goal area and regathers with ease. So Daly, his 15th try of the year. Former Group 9 player, Juni, he comes from. Played first grade at 16. He's played in 13 grand finals, would you believe? And the Canberra supporters would be pretty stoked in both their reserve grade and first grade going through. Belcher now taking over the goal-kicking duties, and he misses. So they've had four kickers so far this afternoon, Canberra. And they lead Granada 31 points to 10. Well, here it is, straight along the back line. Nice quick hands. Laurie Dale is confronted by two, three defenders. Should have been held up there. Bishop backed off. Harris missed the tackle. Good awareness by Daly. Chips forward. Regathers and scores. And I believe he's been replaced now just a precaution with that hamstring injury. Well, if my memory serves me right, the Juni Diesels, which is where Laurie Daly hails from, play Wagga Magpies in the preliminary final of Group 9 tomorrow. The winner to take on the mighty Tamora Dragons in the grand final. So they've had six kicks at goal plus the field goal. Six kickers. When you include... Uh... John, just looking at uh, Laurie Daly down there strapping some ice on his hamstring. Is it just a precaution or did he limp off? Yes, he wasn't all that happy to be replaced, uh, but it is a precaution. He was called off by the club trainers under the instructions, of course, of Tim Sheens. But with the game well won at 31-10, I'm sure uh, we'll have another chance next week to uh, make amends again. Line drop out. All these Cronulla fellas want to do now is hear that siren and they can get off. Think about what might have been. I can't help but feel sorry for Cronulla. They played such magnificent football on Tuesday night. Everyone knew if they could play that kind of football week in, week out, that they would be a challenge for anyone in the grand final. But uh, they haven't been able to match it today, and in the second half, they've been rolled. The 
Short drop out attempted. And Brent Todd takes the ball. The seconds ticking away. Ferguson. Johnny Ferguson. Ferguson. Oh, gee, almost got in behind them all. Only Eddinghausen there preventing him from scoring a try. Belcher putting the little ball into the end goal area. Eddinghausen getting back there. And Meninga almost beat him to the ball. There wasn't much in that between Meninga and Eddinghausen. Photo finished this. There were so many attacking weapons in this uh, Raiders side. And Gary Belcher was just held back enough to not be able to get through. But did Meninga go close? Ever so close. The siren goes in the background. O'Sullivan from... Well, he was going to have a shot at field goal, O'Sullivan. The referee's whistle had already gone. The referee didn't wait for the play to end. He blew it up as soon as the whistle went. Now Sullivan says, I think I put it over anyway. It should be 32-10. So Canberra, stay alive in the Winfield Cup for 1989. With a comprehensive performance, but you must really praise this brave Cronulla outfit. They got back in.